All right, everyone, yesterday I subjected myself to like an hour of the Amy Coney Barrett testimony, the, the confirmation hearings in the Senate, and it was 100% as expected. And this is why I'm not going to pay attention to it. When the meme of the day was Amy Coney Barrett holding up a blank sheet of paper when Cornyn asked her uh, to show her notes, the, the idea among Republicans is, well, this shows she's intelligent. She doesn't even need notes. Of course, the Democrats take that meme and say, oh, well, look, she doesn't know what she's doing. She's not even paying attention. That's predictable. Um, the fact that that was the big meme of the day shows she didn't make any mistakes that the Democrats could seize on. And the, the actual hearings were formulaic. We already know basically how people are going to vote. We know that Collins and Murkowski are soft nose. Manchin could flip. Other than that, though, we know how everyone else is going to vote. And that would, would be a vote to confirm. In fact, if they just get 50 votes, I believe Mike Pence gets to come in as a tiebreaker. And that would be hysterical. That would be the icing on the cake. Imagine Pence comes in a day before the election, confirms the third SCOTUS judge, Trump goes on to lose, but ends up having stacked the court and gets declared president anyway. This is the Democrats' worst nightmare. By the way, I'm not predicting that to happen. But we already know what they're going to say. Lindsey Graham came in and fluffed her over and softballed her a few times and made some sarcastic jabs at the Democrats for obstruction. Then uh, uh, Feinstein came out with a minute of fluffing her up and saying, oh, well, you know, so astute and you have a nice family, blah, blah, blah. Uh, making it, trying to make it look like she wasn't going to be a blatant partisan who was gunning for Amy Coney Barrett the whole time, which she was. Then she went into her tired, sad old spiel about how guns are terrible and Roe v. Wade is magically endangered because there's another conservative justice on the court, a woman, by the way. And the optics of Feinstein rambling about women's rights and lecturing a woman in the process, not so great, to tell the truth. Uh, then Grassley came out with his tired old Strom Thurmond bullshit, talking about how great she is, same as Lindsey Graham. And then Leahy came out remotely, by the way. Oh, I don't think that it's wise that we should even be doing this. I didn't feel it was healthy or appropriate for me to show up. You know, because Leahy's worried because he's like, what, is he fucking 90,000 years old? I used to call him old lizard face. He reminded me of the Koopas in the, in the Super Mario movie. By the way, really campy, shitty 90s movie that's definitely worth watching. He tried uh, try and tell me he doesn't look like the Koopas in that. But anyway, he's so saggy now, he doesn't look like it. He looks more like, you know, the mushroom that Mario wants to eat. Uh, and the dude's out to lunch and had tech problems. And <laughs> Barrett couldn't even hear him at one point and they had to correct it. Uh, it was hilarious. And it's going to keep going this way. You'll have Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat all the way down through, and the Senate will eventually have its vote, possibly before the election. That would be preferable. Possibly in the lame duck session. Well, that's fine. It really doesn't make a difference as long as it's quick. We can end up with a, a situation, and this is why if I were there, even if I were a Dem, I'd probably vote to confirm, and I really do mean that. And if the shoes were on the other foot and I was a Republican, under a Dem president trying to put another Ginsburg on the court, I'd do the same fucking thing, and I'll tell you why. We could end up otherwise in a situation, because Roberts is really a liberal, Bush is a liberal, you know, likes, probably will vote for Biden, you've got a 4-4 split, potentially, in SCOTUS. If you have a contested election in which one or more states, which could potentially cross a candidate over 270, and that is not even that unlikely a scenario at this point with the polls the way they are, in a photo finish style, as Nate Silver, Nate Bronze, or, or Meta Conglomerate, or would put it, if you have an election like that, and you have a four to four split, I would think that a bunch of lower courts, which will be blatantly partisan, decide the election. Now, depending on which states are the closest and can't be uh, potentially uh, infinitely recounted, it depends on the composition of those state Supreme Courts. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it would be preferable on the federal level to have SCOTUS have the final decision-making power as a federal entity than have some random state Supreme Court essentially giving a state... Th think about it this way. A state Supreme Court in Florida, like in the 2000 election, I think the Democrats would seek to avoid this, and that wouldn't even be the least likely state to be the one making the flip. In Florida, in Ohio, in Michigan, in Nevada or something all over the place is making that decision instead. Now those justices having been put in those positions are a scattershot of the political population. That is, some of them would definitely choose Biden for political reasons. Others would choose Trump. Regardless, a large swath of the population will consider the result illegitimate. 
It would be a constitutional crisis. It would take a country that's currently experiencing rolling lockdowns and a recession, and it would up the ante an order of magnitude on the social alienation felt by at least half of that population. Half of them would calm down, the other half would get hot under the collar. That's a recipe for disaster. That's the sort of thing that prefaces wide-scale violence. We've already got riots going on in the United States and have now for months and months. Fed by a bunch of legacy media propaganda bullshit stories for an election year that's become probably the most chaotic since the antebellum period, or at least the Gilded Age. Therefore, it would be better to have SCOTUS, the, the, the noble and regal out, outlet that it is. Uh, it would be better to have them make the decision. That includes if they decide for Joe Biden, honestly. It would be better for the country if they make the decision. Amy Coney Barrett at this point must be confirmed, preferably before the election even happens. This tired bullshit from the Democrats, well, the voters deserve to have their voices heard before the Senate votes. They did. They voted for Trump. They voted to retain the Republican majority in the Senate in the midterm elections. That wasn't that long ago. That's the way it works. That's decorum. That's the way the Constitution operates. You don't get to say, well, Ruth Bader Ginsburg didn't want to be replaced until the next administration. You don't get to make that decision, and neither does Ginsburg. She's dead. She's a corpse. Get over it. Really, really sad. Yeah, she made some good decisions. Uh, she was the, the Valkyrie grandma, or what, she was a strong, empowered woman. Okay, Coney Barrett's a woman, too. It's just that she doesn't have the right religious beliefs, now, does she? Lindsey Graham pointed out, and this is probably the only part of his spiel that actually was appealing at all. I'm not a fan of Lindsay. I was best friends with John McCain for most of my life. Graham, um, I see him as a very slippery individual. He's disingenuous. No, I'm, I'm not going to become a fan of him because now McCain's dead and, and with him dies, I guess, the, the, secret, the non-secret of Lindsey Graham's uh, creed, his proclivities in the bedroom. Uh, now all of a sudden he's allowed to pretend to be a populist <laughs> for more moolah. Um, what he said was, oh, it's very interesting because, you know, the Democratic uh, SCOTUS candidates have never been queried on their faith. Now, what's their faith? It's a very interesting choice of words there from Mr. Graham, Gesundheit. Uh, but he's not wrong. That is true. Democratic candidates, they tend to be more, in the, regardless of the religion, they tend to be considerably more secular. As a secular individual, as a libertarian, not a right winger, who is concerned about Barrett's corporatism um, and, and is pro-choice, I feel she's still an appropriate replacement for Ginsburg. I don't care about the fact that she, oh, she's pro-life. She's a good Catholic, handmaiden's tale, all this other fucking bullshit. And she showed up with a dress that it was on purpose uh, as far as the color scheme goes and, and the mask as well. Should have been a white one, though, I think. I think that would have been even more fitting, and it would have been hysterical if she had a bonnet on. Uh, religious individual, um, but she's also pro-gun. She's clearly a strict constructionist in the general terms. She's from the school of Scalia. That's not a problem. Again, as a pro-choice individual, you've you got to understand that the court doesn't magically, out of thin air, decide, hey, today we're going to take up a case and decide whether the Second Amendment involves guns. There has to be a plaintiff. There has to be an ongoing case that approaches the Supreme Court, and then they have to vote to even take the case up. That's what has to happen. It's a very slow process. If anything, in some cases, this leads to uh, uh, the loss of liberty over time, like with gay marriage. I happen to believe that marriage in the state contract sense never should have been denied to same-sex couples. Because that's all it is. It's a property contract. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with romance. It has to do with property inheritance and medical decisions, essentially, in the form of the state issuing contracts. But for years and years, SCOTUS held off taking cases, challenges of state doctrine against it. And it was very wise to do so, because even though liberty was technically denied individuals, equal protection under the law and so forth, in those cases, SCOTUS didn't want to push the issue until it was clear that there was a mandate to push the issue. Because they didn't want to cause a civil war or something like that. They didn't want to cause riots. Very wise decision. The court is, is quite slow. The same would be true of abortion. I have no doubt whatsoever that both Kavanaugh and probably Barrett would side with the liberals on the court, and John Roberts uh, possibly as well, on those issues. I have no doubt at all. But I think they'll be strictly constructionist when it comes to guns, and I think that's a great thing. Put Amy Coney Barrett on the court, but I'm not going to bother watching confirmation hearings where I pretty much know what's going to be said before it's even said. Oh, you're a Republican? Well, you're going to 
glowingly praise this individual, unless you're Collins or Murkowski, whether they even show up or not. Oh, you're a Democrat? You're going to crucify her. You're going to pretend to like her family and say, oh, well, you're very esteemed, but I've got some concerns, and they're going to they're almost going to softball her in their attacks. Even Feinstein was doing that outside of guns. Klobuchar and Harris and others are trying to grill her over. It's not going to work. She's not going to crack under your pressure. She's more intelligent than a, than a Feinstein will ever be. Or though <laughs> she's more intelligent than a Chuck uh, Grassley or a Lindsey Graham as well. Uh, I think she's a good fit. And again, I don't agree with her on religious and certain moral issues. She's made it clear that she's not going to rule based on those moral principles. Look, if the SCOTUS justices ruled based on their religious principles, um, you'd have a, a cut and dry, always 5-4 decision-making process. You'd never get any uh, a wider sort of uh, decision-making. It'd be a very formulaic court. It hasn't been, especially with Roberts, technically with Kavanaugh at this point. Again, the first major decision Kavanaugh took part in was to join Roberts and four liberals in not hearing cases that could have endangered the right of a woman to choose. Oh, what a blind side that was for all of the liberals who said that he was the devil incarnate and he hated women and he wanted him barefoot in the kitchen. He drank beer. He probably raped people. He had... He had uh, anal train uh, parties in college and all this weird shit that they trotted out. With Amy Coney Barrett, because she's female, it's a little bit more difficult to truly sensationalize. I expect her to be confirmed. That's about all. Peace out.